rise and shine. Pour yourself a cup of coffee and tune in to Good Morning Aurora. News, weather, and really cool interviews. Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. The time is 8.01 a.m. You are listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. It's Wednesday, March 8th of 2023. It's the middle of the week. And uh, what's different about today is uh, well, there's a couple things different about today. The sun is out early this morning. Uh, it's been a pretty nice and bright morning. As you guys recall, the last couple of days haven't been that bright this early. Been a little bit gloomy, but um, I think that we're we're uh, we're effectively getting through it. Um, also, not only is it the middle of the week, man, it's a uh, it's been a very good positive week the week started off really good with us on monday we've been doing some extra filming behind the scenes here uh so we've got some cool things that we'll be showing people uh very shortly sarah hip good morning to you aisha saxon good morning colleen barry putton good morning uh brett and uh gabriel are here how are you guys today doing great happy mm-hmm. to be middle of the week yeah how's your week been going brett i'm doing good Good. Um, so yeah, not only is it the middle of the uh, week, you guys, but uh, you know it's it's March, it's Women's History Month. So there's a whole uh, whole bunch of cool stuff that's um, going on. We've got the news that you need today, and I've got a story uh, that I be that I will be sharing with folks. Um, this actually is something that you know it's it's happened before. It keeps happening, but it's rather unfortunate. Um, it's about uh, a couple meat packing plants and slaughterhouses have uh children working in them did you guys know that children as young as 13 working in slaughterhouses absolutely deplorable Aisha Saxon good morning to you um I want to uh detail this when the time is right I've got the um the whole article here and uh we'll get into it League of Women Voters has been doing some great candidate forums tonight is no different um I believe tonight might be the school district 308 I have the flyer We'll talk about that when the time um, when the time is right and the time comes. Thank you for watching. Good morning, Aurora. Our three year anniversary is coming up this year in May, and we've got the uh, date scheduled May thirteenth, which is a Saturday. We will be having our three year anniversary party at McCarty mills located right downtown on river street it's going to be a big shebang we're still working out a couple of the fine points of the details got the calendar or excuse me got the um got the flyer made but i don't like the way the colors look some of the colors look kind of whack so i'm like man we need to change that shit we need to change oh i didn't mean to swear on (laughs) my bad it's a family show right (laughs) just like family feud yeah um so I, i i need to change up couple of colors because it doesn't look right in certain, you know, certain parts of it I'm just not happy with. So when I get that done, then we will post the flyer. Colleen Barry Putton says, have a great day off to school. Well, we hope you have a great day at school. Michael Reifer said, good morning. Today is International Women's Day as well. Thank you. Isn't it Women's Month? It's the whole month, right? Yeah. yeah. I I think it's International Women's Month. Month. Well, months are made of days, so it's all, it all works good for us um so before we get into things um i would like to have uh brett can you give us that first piece of news about the uh the first piece of family news we're going to go to an early commercial right now and absolutely you know what that qualifies as that thing that we call Strengthening family voices, transforming communities, self-family team. Take part in a free workshop series filled with the down-to-earth tips and easy exercises to reach your goals. Learn to look at your needs, wants, and values. Create supportive teams with other parents to set goals and make plans for achieving those goals. Save these dates, Wednesdays from 5.30 to 7.30. Tonight... 
is a workshop at three for my goal to a plan of action. On the 15th, it's family goal setting. On the 22nd, it's group or team goal setting. And on the 29th, it's where do we go? So, and at the graduation. All right. Thank you very much for that, Brad. The time is 8.05 a.m. Um, so how are you guys feeling today? You know, how are, how are you, Cindy Morales? Good morning to you. I can call you a name. So we got your whole names. That's the thing mm. about the chat. Somebody asked me one time, like, why do you say people's whole name? Well, because it's, you know, I, that's, what else would I say? I can't just call them by the avatar. Hey, you, smiley face avatar blue, how are you today? Mm-hmm. Um, but how are you guys <laughs> right. feeling? You guys can let us know in the chat how you guys are feeling today. We hope that you guys are having a, a, a positive day. And if you're not, keep staying tuned. Keep listening to this show. We will do what we can to make your day um, better. Okay. Um, you know, in addition to Women's History Month, And all the great stuff that's going on. I don't know if anybody noticed that the city of Aurora has been doing a whole lot of different things for women, too. They got an empowerment bag drive that they're having, uh, collecting purses um, for ladies. And also some of the city staff, uh, some of the women city staff um, cut their own ribbon, celebrating some of their own accolades. Um, That post is on the city of Aurora's Facebook page. I thought that was pretty cool. I, I I like seeing that. I like seeing people get appreciation. Yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. I was looking at the the post and the pictures. Mm-hmm. Like, it's really cool how there's they've done so much, especially during Women's History Month for mm-hmm. for women. That's that's really great. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, now, Brett, did you get your mom or parents anything? Any gifts for the ladies in your in your life for Women's Day? Well, I guess I'm gonna be picking up. But flowers today <laughs> can have a good one with those. Now they're exper- Now they're expecting it. Cindy Morales <laughs> says, "Hey, hey, I'm having a fantastic day. We're celebrating Badass Women's Day. All right, okay, I like that. I like that. Cindy Morales is the uh, founder and owner of Pop of Love and Cami Photo Booth. A couple other uh, great things. She's involved in a whole lot in the community, and she's been down since day one. Um, so get to know Cindy Morales and all the great things she does, including the cups." Raw Drive, which is an annual event. Uh, details will be posted forthwith. Okay. Now I'm going to get into it. Anita Lewis, good morning. Glad to start it with you guys. Thank you, Anita Lewis. We appreciate you yeah, so much. You. Okay. Listen to this. The Department of Homeland Security has widened its investigation into migrant children found cleaning slaughterhouses and is now working with the Justice Department to examine whether a human smuggling scheme brought migrant children to work in multiple slaughterhouses for multiple companies across multiple states, according to two uh, U.S. officials familiar with the investigation. At the heart of the investigation is determining how Central American children, some as young as 13, wound up working dangerous jobs that are legal only for American adults by presenting identification stolen from U.S. citizens. Now, if you're like me, you already identified the first really problematic part of this problem. How could it be that a 13-year-old with stolen credentials could possibly be hired anywhere? Right there. How could it be? Who is the right? Who is the hiring manager responsible for that? Um, last month, the Labor Department found that PSSI Packers, excuse me, yes, uh, PSSI Packers Sanitation Services Incorporated employed 102 children at 13 slaughterhouses across eight states. The children were cleaning blood and animal parts off the floor of meatpacking plants by night and going to school. By day, how many in the, in the class have ever been to a meat packing plant? Have you ever been to a meat packing plant? Have any have either of you guys been to a meat packing uh, no, plant? I, no, I've never been to one. Has anybody in the chat ever been inside of a meat packing plant? If you have, say so in the chat. I've been inside of a meat packing plant. It is not the place at all for a child. So far. The investigation is focused on smugglers who may have provided the children with false identities and possibly led them to dangerous jobs. The companies themselves are not targets of the investigation. How could the company not be the target of the investigation? 
NBC News reported in January that uh, DHS's Homeland Security Investigations was investigating whether children ended up working for them through the human trafficking scheme. The newly expanded probe by HSI and the Justice Department is examining whether these children and others were part of this scheme to smuggle minors from Central America to work for these companies in the meatpacking sector. Now, it's not talking about other sectors. We're not talking about transportation. We're not talking about health care. It's simply meat packing. Um, U.S. officials familiar with the investigation described it as, quote, ongoing and robust stretching across multiple law enforcement field offices. PSI, um, the Justice Department declined to, uh, to comment. Now, the spokesperson for PSSI, Gina Swenson, said the company has not been contacted by law enforcement, quote, and has no knowledge of any such investigation. Quote, we have always taken rigorous steps to comply with the law, including use of the government's E-Verify system for new hires, extensive training for all hiring managers, multiple audits, and use of biometrics. NBC News was first to report that a former employee hired the same known minor twice under two different names in the span of six months. The time is 8, 11 a.m. Gabriel Bradford, what do you make of all that? I think that is really, really, really sad that, you, you know, you have people working, especially minors, because, um, again, that's at 13, th those places are really, really students should not be working there. And, I mean, I, again, the fact that they're only 13 years old is, I mean, that's very problematic because, again, the, I mean, at 13, you don't have the right type of skills and the ability to stay safe. So uh, I definitely think that's something that should be, you know, continue to be investigated and that all minors who are working there are taken out of the situation, obviously, due to the, you know, safety concerns. And then they do investigate you know, everyone else involved because that, that really shouldn't be something that's happening. Right. Brett, what do you think about that? I agree with what Gabriel said. I'm like, again, I know that kids growing up, like, in rough neighborhoods and they barely get them by, like, they have to, like, make money somehow. And I don't think it working at a meat pack in factory for like cleaning it up i'm like right that sounds like the plot of a horror movie to me. yeah i so there's there's um there's actually my one of the i have two really bad issues with it um cindy morales says uh yes it sounds horrible karina suarez darden good morning here's you know and i'll read the statement from the company of what the like their official reply back to it but isn't it sad that a person would have to even consider bringing their kid to work in a meatpacking plant like what what does that what does that say like the fact that you could even fall into the trap to have to work at a meatpacking facility and i think that not if, if that's not wrong enough the companies they never go after the companies for this the company will exist the people will get taken out, but the company will exist. I'm tired of that. I think the company should suffer the maximum penalty, including being mm -hmm. fined, and if they go out of business, so be it. I mean, that's just my own personal opinion, not to attack the business, but it's the heart of the matter that a 13-year-old, you could lose a finger or a limb working in a meatpacking plant, and that can happen if you've been trained mm -hmm. and have experience working in it. You know what I'm saying? They're cutting apart mm -hmm. animals. It's not a glorious place to be at. Um, the time is 8.14. Dan Barrero is here. Good morning, Dan. Vizzo Arts is here. Good morning to you guys as well. Um, I'm going to get back to uh, reading the uh, next part of this. For those who, who are just tuning in, we're talking about a terrible story that um, has made the news again about miners working in meatpacking plants. Um, a former PSSI manager said it's common in the meatpacking industry to turn the other way when a prospective employee presents an ID that appears false. In this industry, we have a lot of people who are undocumented workers. A lot of times it's because they're not going to pay well enough to hire people in America who want to do it. That is a fact. Mm -hmm. That is a fact. And that's the sad reality of it. 
The former manager confirmed that the company uses the federal government's E-Verify program, but said that while some employees presenting false documents were turned away, it was common for workers who presented obviously false IDs to get hired as long as the documents stated they were legal and of age. Um, Quote, you can look at the ID and tell the person on the ID is not even close to the person standing in front of you. Now, Ms. Swenson, who is the spokesperson for PSSI, denied the claims. She says, quote, this is categorically false. We have been crystal clear that we do not want a single person under the age of 18 working for the company. We have trained and retrained our hiring employees on how to actively spot identity theft as part of our extensive efforts to enforce this absolute prohibition against employing anyone under the age of 18, close quote. Now, you hear that, and you hear what the Justice Department said, that they're under investigation. So you make the call as to which of the pieces of information is actually valid. The time is 8.16 a.m. Good morning to all of you great people. Uh, Scott Hayes, Ann Hartnett, Jen Mendoza, good morning to you, and Joe Jackson is here. Good morning to you guys. Um, Gabriel Bradford, I'm going to take you to a commercial. Can you please give us two or three pieces of news, and then we will come back and talk to these fantastic people today. The time is 8.16 a.m. Embrace Equity this Saturday, March 11th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. will be an International Women's Day pop-up event hosted by the Glen Allen Area Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, Incorporated. The City of Aurora's Financial Empowerment Center will also be there. This will take place at Roosevelt Middle School located at 22500 Oak Street in Bellwood, Illinois. The Boss Talks portion and presentation will be from 1030 a.m. to 1115 a.m. A follow-up worship will be from noon to 245 p.m. Save the date and we look forward to seeing you there. And Saturday, April 15th from 8 a.m. to noon, join the Fox Valley Park District and many other fantastic organizations for the annual Community Cleanup Service Project. All participants will meet at the Cole Center located at 101 West Illinois Avenue. The cleanup itself will encompass both banks of the Fox River close to downtown. Many great organizations will take part. For more information, you can email communitycleanup at foxmetro.org. And Thursday, April 27th, from 9 to 10 a.m., there will be a helpful event taking place at the Aurora Public Library. Estate Planning 101, Protecting Your Family's Future, is an event that is very important. This is a complimentary session hosted by the Community Foundation of the Fox River Valley. And Mickey Wilson, Weiler, Renzer, Leonard, and Julian PC, an Elder Law Center PC. This event will be held at the Santori branch of the Public Library, 101 South River Street in downtown. Don't miss this event. Time is 8.18 a.m. You're listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Great job with that news, young man. That was a damn good job. I'm I'm proud of you. (laughs) All right. The last night was the State of the City um, event um, and speeches and uh, events. Maybe you guys watched that. Did you guys watch that last night? You know what? What? I have Mandarin at 6 o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you did not Ev- watch it. I did not. Everyone <laughs> schedules everything for like the, the two evenings that I have like an evening uh, class. Right. Like that's, and I, I don't know why they do it, but they're like 6 o'clock, can you make it? I'm like, no, I got Mandarin. I can't, right. you know, I'm, right. I'm learning things. Like right. I, and I with can't. learning Mandarin, you got to pay attention. <laughs> you you do, can't oh, be you dis- do, yeah, yeah. You can't be distracted yeah. watching something else. No, no, you can't. They'll be like, hey, uh, can you tell me what this is in Mandarin? And be like, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. Like, no, you, you, you have to be like 100% in, all invested, or you're good. Oh, that reminds me. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've got a new, I want to I wanna say, uh, boys, let me zoom in on you. Look at look at how good the staff looks today. Take a look mm-hmm. at Brett. Take a look at Gabe. Look at him. Shirts and ties. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. We doing it. Now take a look at your boy. Hold on. Can they zoom in on me? Can I see myself on this? Yeah, you know. Something new with the news, ladies and gentlemen. Something new with the news. The most professional news show in the whole land. Um, all right. Cindy Morales says, remember when the reports came out that the CBP, the California Border Patrol, misplaced and lost over 5,000 migrant children? I wonder if these are the children they could not account for at the border. That could be. That could be, oh, yeah. which was sad. I remember that. I remember when that happened. That was that was sad. Misplacing mm-hmm. children. Oh, we just lost them. Like I lost my, remember I lost my wallet? Yeah. Uh, 
how oh, unfortunate. Yeah, I, I right? That. People should not be reduced to being lost like keys or a wallet. Yeah. Dan Barrero says mm-hmm. we're looking sharp. Yeah. Thank you, Dan Barrero. Thank you. Right? We need that. You need that. Yeah. You need oh, that yeah. kind of. You need, you need that reassurance mm-hmm. and everything. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Karen Caputo is here. Good morning to you, Karen and um, Scott Hayes. So I saw, um, I watched only a, a couple of minutes of the, um, of the city, state of the city address last night. Um, but I do want to say to folks that, um, especially if you guys were not aware, um, we broke the news. Well, the Beacon News actually broke the news locally here, but... Um, when the deal came through for the airport, you know, we talked about that. So it was actually pretty cool to see that the news story that we talked about way back was the thing. Yeah. Um, but I think a lot yeah. of, I think the, uh, the idea went over people's heads. Like people texted me last night. They were like, yo, did you know that we, uh, Aurora's got an airport and we're going to be having flights? I was like. Well, having flights is new, but the uh, airport is. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's been around for a long time, but. It and is. I think I was looking at the address. Is that airport in Aurora or is it Sugar Grove? It's Sugar Grove. Yes. The address is yes. Sugar Grove. Now, the, oh, yeah. the Air Classics Museum, those guys are friends of ours. Uh, we interviewed them. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, we did. Now, there are a lot of veterans, uh, Aurora guys, too. So, But, no, the airport's been there for a long time. I think yeah. what's sad about it is that nobody has known because it hasn't been, like, really doing anything. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know when the last flight that was that came out of or into Aurora. Uh, maybe we should have Tracy Duran look that up. Yeah, that that'd be a cool thing to look up. See, see where uh, when the last flight was. Yeah. Do they still do like like the the private flights, or is that is that something? To, oh, I thought maybe it was a different airport because I know there's there's like a a couple local air like small airports where like you can do like small private flights around here. Oh, well, there's um. Uh, when you're talking about private, the only private air body that I know of is Aero Estates. Yes, that's which is lot. on 59 yeah. going south, but that's technically Naperville. Yeah, I think you're right. Never mind. I think so that's Naperville. So I don't think Aurora mm-hmm. has any private plane uh, areas or anything like yeah, that. But we could be wrong. We if anybody knows that in the chat, um, please let us know. All right, check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so May 6th is going to be, there is a, a great neighborhood cleanup taking place. All, uh, Eighth Ward, older woman Patty Smith is having her particular cleanup on that day. Uh, trash compactor trucks will be arriving at 8 a.m. and will leave promptly at 11. Trucks will be placed in the following location. Our Lady of Mercy Catholic Church, 701 South Eola Road. Acceptable items are building materials, discarded furniture, large and small household appliances, carpet and pads, grills, wood, metal, old toys, bicycles, mattresses, and similar items. No electronic or paint cans. No electronic or paint cans. Don't be the guy coming there with a pan of paint. A pan of paint? What the hell? Let me scratch up a A can of paint. Oh, man. That that could just... Come in all the tomb with the show. Just have True. a dictionary. You know what? Like yeah, tombs. you know Pan what, Brett? I, see, Brett, that's why you on this show. <laughs> You're right. Maybe we'll just call it Kink from now on. Hey, yeah. 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 You know, why not? We, like, we make our own words like all the time, you know? Like, <laughs> like the thing with, with Good Morning Roy, you got to know. We we make up new words. So I mean, <laughs> what's that? Like the, the other day we're talking, we, we come up with new words all the time. What did we fun. make the other day? It was something that I messed up. Uh, really. was, I, I put like two words together. Or yeah, right? yeah, it was. I can't remember. Who I can't was. think of what that yeah. was, but that was pretty good. Um, anyway, yes, the uh, the Ward Eight neighborhood cleanup is is going on once again. It's be Our Lady of Good Mercy Church, um, May sixth. So get ready for that. Do you guys take part in the neighborhood cleanups? Yes. Well, we were just talking about this on Monday. Remember, we, I I did oh, that how neighborhood we cleanup. Yeah, ages oh, at the ago. Peace yeah. House. yeah, that was the citywide one. I, yeah, I don't think that, that was, wasn't that wasn't like ward specific. No, right? it wasn't. It was like mm-hmm. a citywide cleanup, and that was you know that's really cool. I th- and I believe they're won't they be doing that again this year? I think. Uh, look at Joe Jackson unloading my pans of cake from my car trunk now. <laughs> 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 See, he's already got to go. <laughs> right, uh, good. right. Um, so uh, I'm going to. Uh, I want to. I want to give a uh, quick, quick shout out right now to. Uh, I want to say I'm happy and proud of Brett here. Um, so you guys will notice on our Facebook page last weekend. 
first Friday, Brett went out to uh, Bally Doyle for the Tango Comics Infinium book release. Viesel Arts were there. A couple of our other friends were in the house. Brett had one job. He only had one job. All he had to do was go there, take some pictures, and mingle. And he did that. He did it so well. Mm -hmm. I went and took a shower. I came back. Notifications were off the chart. And it was all kinds of cool people saying, great job, Brett. You did a good, you, you did a really good job, Brett. So congratulations, man. Thank you. We are, uh, we are very proud of you. Brett is our community, community outreach uh, dude. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, when you see Brett out there in the community, we're going to throw him in the pool more and more. We're going to put him weird places, and Brett's going to be there showing up with his shirt, and he will make us look good all the time, man. So, Brett, good job, brother. Thanks. Actually, we can't do that again because that we almost knocked over something. Here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we probably almost that knocked over the equipment. Be. We're like, hey, sorry, folks. Yeah, that looked dangerous. <laughs> yeah. like, but, uh, hey, that, that would be another segment. Awkward handshake. Right. Um, <laughs> all right. The time is eight twenty-six a.m. You're listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Brett, give us that second piece of information, the part about uh, our great city. Okay. Thankfully, the news is. Way happy, so right, brighten up the mood. Mm -hmm. So, Wallet Hub names of where among the happiest places to live in America. One of our West starts off with one of our Western suburbs has the new title of one of the happiest places to live. If you guessed of where, we're correct. <laughs> Wallet Hub, but again, Frank Tavoira. <laughs> Among the happiest cities in America, the suburb is now in 19th place. Madison, Wisconsin is listed third, and coming in first is Fremont, California. All and right. one day, a warrior will take that place. All right, thank you this, very much. Uh, this oh. is based on several things, including well-being, employment, and community. All right. Thank you very much for that, Brett. Time is 827 a.m. Tracy Duran is here. She says, you fellows are looking very dapper with the suits. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, I re we are. Yeah. See that, right? <laughs> yeah. Real news. Real news. Police came and pulled us over. They were like, where you? Oh, excuse us, gentlemen. Excuse us. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Aurora Municipal Airport, Sugar Grove. Dan Barrero says the previous Aurora Animal Shelter was in Montgomery and the Fox Valley Golf Course was in North Aurora but had been sold and demolished. The airport is the last city-owned property outside of Aurora. Wow, didn't know that. Mm. Michael wow. Rayford says we should double uh, Brett's salary. It's a good <laughs> idea. And um, Cindy Morales says the Aurora Airport hosts private flights and taxi flights too. Oh, okay. So oh, there it okay. is. We do have oh, private okay. flights that come okay. in and out of Aurora. That's DuPage Airport and West Chicago. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Okay, so we do. We should make a rap video, right? Or we get on yeah. right? See if we can get a yeah, let's get the city to sponsor us a quick a quick trip, like just to, you know, somewhere yeah, somewhere yeah. close. Oh get yeah. like get, get some B roll, be like, Hey, can can we go like around here? We'll just do like a little circle yeah. around Aurora. We'll be <laughs> like drones, right? a bird's eye view. You got got City yeah. Hall like way down here and like <laughs> Like what's your guys' budget? Well, we were thinking about more of the bartering system. Right? Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah but we got three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take us on a quick spin. We'll pose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, as I mentioned, the Aurora, the Air Classics Museum. Want to say shout out to the gentlemen of the Air Classics Museum out there in Sugar Grove. That has a lot of history to it. Those guys are veterans and they're volunteers. They do a really good job um, in everything that they uh, do all the programming out there. Also, if you want to intern, they do have internship programs out there as well so shout out to them Ooh. and all that they do the time is 8 29 a.m you are listening to and watching good morning aurora the second largest city's first daily news podcast um so when we on friday now we've got um a couple of other good things that we are going to show the people we've got a brand new loop and roll in the morning time if you guys have not noticed in the early part of the show that loop and roll actually i'm a Play a little bit for him right now. Hold on. Let's let's show him the loop. Let's show him the, the new piece of footage that we got here. Ah, yeah. So you guys can see, right? Got a new intro. What do you guys think about that new intro? You guys like the intro? You let us know in the chat if you like it. Times 829. BTP is here. Brett Jimenez. Good morning to you, Brett. Art, culture, and style. That's my son right there getting some coffee for his dad. Got to learn. Got to teach him how to make it. 
<laughs> Brent says, Brent says, ooh, sick. Thank you, man. Yeah, a little bit of filming. You see that? People are like, how is it summertime video, but the weather's like cold? <laughs> well, that's what you call repurpose exactly you know? <laughs> yeah we, we film all like the nice yeah. weather videos over the like the spring and summer yeah. and then we just save them for when it's cold and you want something to to remind you of the warm weather absolutely yeah. absolutely all right guys i got a brand new piece of information here uh i got another piece of something that you know and love that we also know and love and it's called Time is 8.30. Dan Burrow says, I took a flight from the Aurora Airport to Springfield once. It was on a small plane. I was glad when we landed. <laughs> hmm. Sounds like you didn't have a lot of faith in the pilot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. you didn't have fun there. <laughs> right. That's the only man who was on a private flight and wanted to get off. Like, yeah, I was terrible. saying, I'm like, hey, get, get me on that. that like, <laughs> I mean, the leg room, like, you right. don't get that on a normal airplane unless you fly, like, flirt, first class. <laughs> Right. With Delta. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Me, per, I'm a Southwest guy. I'm a Southwest guy. Southwest treats you right, man. Southwest, yeah, Southwest treats nice. you, yes. you know, really good. Um, okay. Donate blood and fund research. Uh, this is brought to us by Versity and the American Cancer Society. Uh, behind every person diagnosed with breast cancer, there are family and friends, physicians and scientists. Let's give a voice to this community through research support cancer research um tuesday march 28th from 10 a.m to 2 30 p.m this is going to be at elmwood terrace 1017 west galena boulevard to schedule call 800 uh, oh i see what they did it's 72 give the number is 72 give so 7 t-o-g-i-v-e but they didn't put the according numbers that's see. weird that's the the weird thing. Whenever people post that, like on a billboard, they're like eight hundred, right? Give or whatever. I'm like I don't know what that means. Like, yeah, I ain't got time to be typing one. You know, Sesame it's, Street. Yeah, yeah. Right. What, are the, what are the digits, man? <laughs> yeah. that, that's the thing. Like I have no idea, and people will be like, "Yeah, it's, well, it's a good marketing thing." I'm like, I can remember that, but I, am I gonna call it? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> um, and Noodles and Company is also sponsoring this. Uh, so it says, give blood, get noodles, receive a coupon to buy one, get one free entree for Noodles and Company um, while supplies last. I'll send this to you, Gabriel. You can put that in the chat um, for folks and let them know what's going on. The time is 8.32 a.m. Uh, we're going to go to another commercial. we got a whole lot of news to give out today. Gabriel, here's what I want you to do. Give us two more pieces of news. Make one of them the court-based rental assistance for Neighbor Project. Please, young man, if you would be so kind. (laughs) Absolutely. So Tuesday, March 7th, will be a line dancing class taking place. Hold up. Tuesday, March 7th was yesterday. Now, that's my bad. Oh, (laughs) you know what? That's my bad. Today's the 8th. It is. Folks, we... You got to read ahead, baby. We got to read ahead. You got to read ahead. But I got to scrub that. I apologize, my brother. Well, now Friday, April seventh, so so next month, right? Well, there will be a <laughs> special presentation for Easter weekend called "Who Killed the Carpenter's Son." This will take place at Fresh Start City Church, located at ten South Lancaster Avenue in Aurora. The start time is seven p.m. If you are seeking a welcoming, community-oriented church home, consider Fresh Start City Church. And Friday, March 10th, a new way church presents Colby Martin, a progressive Christian author, on a book tour landing in Naperville. This will be a book signing and also a meet and greet. A new way is a faith-based inclusive community that is a safe space for all to enjoy and share the word of God. You can scan the QR code, which we have posted on the flyer or to our SVP and reserve your seat. And there will Free financial coaching as a public service is available from the City of Aurora's Financial Empowerment Center and the Neighbor Project. Help is available in over 150 languages. Again, that is 150 languages. And our counselors are standing by to help. You can visit their office Monday through Fridays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 712 South River Street or call 630-256-4552. Again, the number to call is 630-256-4552 and schedule your appointment. And the 
Thursday, the March. Oh, sorry. Court-based rental assistance is still available to for those in a court eviction proceeding due to non-payment. The non-payment is conditioned on financial hardship due to the pandemic. Eligible applicants may qualify for up to twenty-five thousand dollars in emergency rental payments. This program is open to anyone in the state is and is not conditioned by county. The deadline for applications is June twenty twenty-three. For more information, you can scan the QR code which we posted. Or call 630-906-9400. Again, the number to call is 630-906-9400. That's right. Thank you very much for that, Gabriel. The time is 8.35 a.m. You are listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Nicole Astra is here. Good morning to you, Nicole. And Sarah, um, uh, where did she go? Miss Tesh, uh, good morning to you as well. Um Think Cafe. How did that launch go? Were you there for that launch? Yes, I was. You were. I, I was see you in there the pictures. For the launch. Oh, you. Uh, you know what? That's that's the thing. We we could do a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. So that's that's how it works. I was helping a lot oh. with coordinating. Okay, so you were so cafe. you were so far behind the scenes that you, you yeah. were way in the back. Yeah, you know that's <laughs> that's what happens when you plan an event. People are like, oh yeah, you always get in with the photo ops. It's like no, we actually. We're always the ones who are like stressing out about like the you know even the the small things. True. So I was I that that was the thing where we had it was we had a great turnout actually. It was a lot of people who showed up and it was just such a great event. It was and again for those who don't know, Think Cafe is all about getting feedback from people and it works in a way very similar to what Jubilee Media does mm-hmm. in their Spectrum video series. So we'll say a statement like, you see yourself thriving in Aurora in the next five years. Mm-hmm. And so you'd be like, oh, I absolutely agree. Or you would say, I absolutely not don't agree. Right? Right. And, the, and there's a spectrum to that. So there's some people who are like, I somewhat agree, I agree, or I somewhat don't agree, or I really don't agree, right? And so it's really cool to hear how different people feel differently. Some people are like, Yes, I feel like there's a lot of supports here, mm-hmm. and it's great. And, and for those people, that's awesome. And right. then there's other people where they're like, oh, I need more support in this. Or, you know, maybe one example of that could be like, like, oh, we need more support in women's sports or right. more representation there. Whatever it is, there's different things where they'll do different reasons. They'll, they'll give us that they don't see them thriving in Aurora. Or, and again, that's just a, a theoretical, you know, question and, or you know, statement that they would give. And so it's really, it's a really cool opportunity. So we had the launch about, I think it was a little over a week ago Mm -hmm. and it was really great. We were showing people how it would be run. It's, it's getting that feedback and that information. We had a lot of really good ideas from people on how we can improve it, how we can change the, you know, the survey a little bit, the formatting. And so it was really helpful. It was Uh, you know, kind of just seeing how it'll look on a larger scale. So we have, a, we have a lot of other schools that will be doing this very soon. I believe there's actually one happening today. So stay tuned for another Think Cafe. Yes, at another school. Yeah, absolutely. So the first Think Cafe was held at the Alive Center, right? And that was in partnership with State Representative Barbara Hernandez's. Uh, Youth, youth advisory, advisory committee. Yeah, yeah, youth advisory committee. So we were that, that was a partnership there, and it was it was really great. We had a lot of different youth who came in for that, and we had some really really good conversations with the youth. Like, good. And again, it's what's really great about it is we have everyone just sharing of what they think. It's a safe space, mm-hmm. no judgment. All we want to do is hear what you have to say, and good. all this is people are. T- take the notes down they hear we have a little form that you know where we're filling out we're like okay they said so many of these people agree with us or so many people disagree and maybe here's why what's the frequency of so of the think cafe um so it will it, it's going to be held out in in the four main schools here in aurora okay and then we have a couple alternative options mm-hmm. and so it will be um, it's really on a personal basis with the with the locations that we're we're holding it at. So 
it's not like it will be, you know, like every week or, or okay. something like that. So but it's kind of a TBD for the next one. Yeah, at the yeah. Moment? So okay. so we're we're planning them out with the different schools. We're getting the the confirmation, and so once we've we've met with with the four main schools and some of the, all the alternative spaces, we will then be uh, putting that together in an aggregated report, which right. we will then like present to the city with recommendations on different programs we can create to better fit the needs in some of these cases. So people do feel like they, in five years, they'll be thriving, right? Like that's, that's where we want to develop more of these things. We want people to see themselves here. All right. Well, we look mm-hmm. forward to supporting that, man. Uh, the time is 840. Josue Pais, good morning. Zor Zapata is here. Good morning. Get to know Zor Zapata hand crafted. Uh, Zor Zapata is a fantastic makeup artist. She does a whole lot for the community, and she is also one of the great people who is involved with Padres Lederes. Uh, hold on. Let me scratch it up. What the? I got to look at it. Padres Lederes de Acción, I think. Parent Action, something like that, and Kofi. Uh, we, Buenos Dias Aurora mm-hmm. interviewed her and a great young man by the name of Flavio Rodriguez yesterday. Great interview. Got to learn a whole lot about what's going on in the community and uh, how parents can be involved, get ready for their great event that they have taking place this Saturday at Wesley United Methodist Church, 14 North May Street. 14 North May Street. That's the intersection of May and Galena. Funny story, I used to work right across the street from there. Once upon a time. Oh, yeah. Oh, I did. Cool. I did. Well, I was an intern. I wasn't actually like working. Work. I was working. Actually, I was I was working hard. Oh, I was working real I remember hard. that. You, you were, what, that's a barber's office, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Before the pandemic. Oh, yes. Yeah, so that that's that when was it was old time school. Ago. Wow, that's when man. I was eating granola bars all day, dying, canvassing, knocking on doors till my <laughs> hands hurt. Yeah, that's that's the interesting thing about state representatives. They're elected for two years, mm-hmm. so every other year is an election. Year yeah, she just her, she just celebrated four years of being a yes. of being a state rep. So congratulations yeah. to her. All right, the time is eight forty two a.m. Um, we're gonna move on here uh, to another piece of uh, information I need to tell you guys about. I'm gonna give you the League of Women Voters. You guys know that Good Morning Aurora is the type of program that has consistently told you that you need to vote. You need to exercise your right to vote. One should always inform themselves about candidates, what they stand for, what they believe in, what they want to achieve, and what they want to accomplish. Last night, Oswego had the school board 308 candidate forum, and then East Aurora School Board's candidate forum also went down um, uh, last night as well. Um, So the next one that's coming up is uh, we've got two this evening, actually. Alderman at Large and Ward 3 candidate forum is taking place tonight at 6 p.m. And Alderman at Large has a lot of candidates in Ward 3. We've got Sherman Jenkins, who's the incumbent. Uh, John Leish, Mansa Latham Williams, Olinda De Hoyos, and Ted Mesiakos, who is uh, so that's who's running for Ward 3. The other people I mentioned, John Leisha, Monsalanta, Williams, are challengers for the Aurora Alderman at Large position. All forums will be via Zoom tonight and live streamed on the League of Women Voters Facebook page. And then tonight at 8 p.m. is the candidate forum for Alderman, uh, Aldermanic Wards 5 and 8. Uh, Carl Franco is the incumbent. He has a challenger named David Cannon. And then Patty Smith is the incumbent of the 8th Ward. And the challenger is Gautam Bhatia. Um, and, again, that's going to be tonight on the League of Women Voters Facebook page. So get ready for that. If I have a chance, I'll, I'll watch that. Next, and the last thing that, has, uh, that the League of Women Voters has coming up recently is the, uh, or soon, rather, is March 21st, 6.30 p.m. Bought and paid for the influence of money on representative government. Join the League of Women Voters for an informative program on campaign funding. Learn what PACs, super PACs, and dark money are and how funding is regulated. Guest speaker will be Alisa Kaplan, Executive Director of Reform for Illinois. This will be held in person and virtually at the uh, downtown Royal Public Library, 101 South River Street, right across from Society 57. The time is 8.44 a.m. Brett, are you ready for the next First Friday? Definitely. I'm like, Are you sure? 
if that comic event showed me anything, mm-hmm. it it showed me that I love it going to the events I met of this new of the show movie so Marissa like, Aloni, yep. She was super nice she was telling me about the local businesses and all I tried to stop by there on one day actually and I Okay. What business? Uh, Zenoff. Oh, Zenloft, that's right. Yeah. Okay. And then, like, I saw that I hope he was in his clothes. I'm like, well, dang, when should I come in? It's like. Yeah, you got to go there, like, in the afternoon. You got to go yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah. Do you do yoga, yeah, Brett? Yeah. The only position I know is down where the dog. That's about it. So. <laughs> that was a. Uh, oh, and uh, <laughs> Sadipin. Yeah. That's what that butt was made for. <laughs> <laughs> like, and feel, what, what's the other one? Leap in? Uh, and just sleeping, if that counts. Oh, but. sleeping. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we all do that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that could be a thing. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> good yoga move. Right. Mm-hmm. And you graduate this year. Yeah. Are you ready for that? When's your graduation date? May 13th. May 13th, coming up. <gasps> May 13th? That's the day of our party. Oh, Wait. snap. Uh, I actually graduate at 10 a.m., so. Okay, so yeah. you can make it to the party. Uh, yeah. All right, my man. Well, we got to. That'd be fun. We got a double. Brett graduates the same day that we have our uh, our anniversary party. Oh, How about and, that? Well, it's uh, on. Now, yeah. now we got to get like a big cake or something. Be like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're three, you know, three little candles for you. <laughs> right. That's <laughs> nice, man. Congratulations, that'd Brett. Be, we're, we're, cool. we're, we're proud of you, man. We're proud of Thanks, you. Man. And you're, you're, do, you're actually working in. Communications for Wabonzi too, right? I, yeah, I work for the athletics department. The last game I worked, I was working the concession stand, so I was in charge of making popcorn. I, I got the idea to go in the stands and do like the White Sox event, do for us to go like, get your popcorn here, freshly popped it, <laughs> just popped it today. Like, and how did, that, I just had how did to, that go over? Uh, well, I couldn't leave the stand, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Like, whenever people that came up to the stand, I'd do that, and then, like, did that, and then buy good. a bag. I think I'm a good salesman with that. But yeah. Good. Okay, the time, is, uh, the time is 847. I'm just going to highlight one more time um, the story today for those who are just joining us. Uh, Dan Burrell actually says, the League of Women Voters did a great job hosting the event. Great questions were asked, and all the District 131 candidates did a great job answering the questions. I like how he put that. They did a great job answering the questions. Sir, the question is this. Don't deviate from, right? Don't, yep. n- don't take me on a trip to Lori Lightfoot. Just <laughs> keep it here, man. Keep mm-hmm. it here. Um, anyway, I want to uh, mention one more time for those who just tuned in. Uh, the story of the day is uh, young children who were found uh, working in um, a company called PSSI, Packers Sanitation Services Incorporated. They employed 102 children at 13 slaughterhouses across eight states. Children were cleaning blood and animal parts off the floor of meatpacking plants by night and going to school by day. Uh, You guys know that this is the kind of show that wants to connect people and uh, inform and educate them and we 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 try to talk about the things that matter the most uh this is really sad because i have worked in a well i didn't work there but i've been in a meat packing plant before a slaughterhouse it's not a place to have children it's really sad that children are working in a slaughterhouse mm-hmm. uh this should really outrage everybody if you ever get a chance to read this it's from in it's uh an nbc news story and uh the authors of this story are julia ainsley and laura strickler the writing of this story is absolutely fantastic department of homeland security investigation is ongoing and they want to know they're trying to find out if this was set up through a human trafficking scheme a human trafficking scheme the investigation is ongoing and robust the time is eight forty nine a.m okay um gabriel take us to one last final final commercial and in this final commercial gabriel give us java plus chili that's happening this weekend and then give us uh i think it's at the very 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 bottom mm-hmm. um 
whatever's at the very bottom. Okay. So Saturday, March 11th from noon to 3 p.m. will be the Chili Cook-Off happening at Java Plus, 1677 Montgomery Road. Competitors oh, are already uh, all lined up. There's, I think I've heard there's about 10 different submissions. Uh, and for customers, there is a $5 fee, and that includes sampling all the tasty submissions. For more information, you may call 331-212-6665. Again, that is 331-212-6665. The League of Women Voters, the Aurora area ones, are hosting... We just did that. Yeah, we just did that. We did. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we just was, did that. That was the last uh, last piece of the That news. was the bottom? Yeah, what's, that was one the of, bottom. what's on top of that? Uh, Sunday is the Harry B. Stock Parlor. And what's on top of that one? Okay. Uh, court based rental assistance. What's on top of him? Uh, the neighbor project, uh, the ho- workshops. Uh, is it the tax refund workshop for this Saturday? Uh, Mar- or it's Thursday. It's the no. So go to the very top and like go like two down. There should be a tax refund workshop, Aurora Financial Empowerment Center, Saturday the eleventh. Okay, I'm not finding the one for. Okay, I got the flyer for it. I can uh, I can do that after I scratch it up. (laughs) Okay, two things real quick. Norma Peterson, the link to the story that we were talking about is in the chat. I just put that in the chat from NBC News, so that is in the chat for you guys to. uh, You can read this story at your leisure. Um, And the uh, specific thing that we're talking about here, when it comes to. The tax refund workshop that's going to be taking place um, this Saturday. Uh, There's two sessions. The first session is going to be in English that starts at 10 a.m. The second session is going to be in Spanish and that'll start at 11 a.m. This uh, workshop will focus on deductions, credits, refunds, and budgeting. 7 12 South. Oh my gosh. How do you get 12 wrong? (laughs) Wow, Curtis. Right? Thank God the camera's off. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they would have watched me mess it up. How does this guy can't read? It's um pans of cane and struggling yeah. to say twelve. Pans of cane. Yeah, right. Um <laughs> seven twelve South River Street. Uh for more information, you can call six three zero two five six four five five one. The number again is six three zero two five six four five five one. Two fantastic counselors will be presenting Paul Dominguez and Francisco. Robinson, and for more information, call that number two five six four five five one. Let me know you heard about it on Good Morning Aurora. Yeah, that's right. When you say it slow, it sounds right. Sounds like romantic. Yeah. Sounds like a Gucci yeah. commercial. Marry me. Good morning, Aurora. All right, <laughs> times eight fifty two. Um. So yeah. Well, it's been a uh, it's been a heck of a ride. It's been a heck of a week. We've got a great show uh, coming up for you guys this Friday. Brett Putton is uh, now part of the show officially. Um, he will be here Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays starting next week. We've got a whole lot of different things that we want to show you guys, try out with you guys, inform you guys about, and uh, make some good community news and community moments happen. So we look forward to doing that. Next week we will be downtown at the um, – ACTV Studios, our home base, and uh, so you'll see us. You'll see us there. If you notice something though, too, Good Morning Aurora is always coming up, man. We're always doing something new. We're always doing something fresh and something different. Today we filmed a pretty cool skit. Um, I think we'll so we we'll post it for them, right? Yeah, yeah. give them a little yeah. some some. Show them a little sprinkle them. Yeah. Do they yeah. deserve it though? Oh yeah, do they? Yeah. They, they deserve it. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah they you're right. I mean, right. our dedi- listeners are the most dedicated. You are, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, right, right. We'll sprinkle them, show them a little something, something. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a good one. Stay tuned. It is. It yeah. is a good one. Uh, did we forget anything, boys? Well, stay tuned for more community events. I think first Friday's April first, March. That, or, uh, you don't know. April first is the yes. the, uh, the next That's one. The next first Fridays. Um, Wait. 
Uh, no, it's not. No, it's the not. first a, April first is a Saturday. No, my it is yeah. a Saturday. That's right. April seventh. My April bad. April seventh is the April seventh yep. is the first first Friday in April. Yes. Um, and then May is the food truck festival. I was about, well. What's I'm looking what's April? To I I know May. Yeah, it's definitely food truck festival. April is financial literacy month. Oh, okay. But I don't know if April has a special connotation in downtown mm-hmm. Aurora. Does anybody know that in the chat? They could let us know. Maybe you guys do. Maybe you guys don't. Uh, I don't know what the theme is going to be, but we'll have to yeah, we'll, check we'll it out. Yeah, we'll be down. Look out for, for Good Morning Aurora, the team. We'll be out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's 8.55. I hope that uh, we hope that you guys have a uh, great, fantastic rest of the day. We tried to show you guys a brand new view today. So I hope that you guys, you know, I hope that you liked it. You know, the team is coming up, man. I've got, so we've got a great staff, a great squared away, dedicated, gentleman, gentlemanly looking staff, man. And I'm really <laughs> proud of all these guys do and all that we do as a collective team. Uh, tomorrow is another great episode of Noticias con Karina on Buenos Dias Aurora. And, uh, Karina will regale the city with all the programs and initiatives going on uh, in Spanish. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be at 8 o'clock a.m. Um so, without further delay, guys, Brett, last words. I did this with the button in the break, so stay classy, avoid. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, Gabriel, I almost called you Greg. You know what? <laughs> I, almost I, put, I almost put Brett I, and Gabriel together and I came up been, with Greg. I've been called Greg before. <laughs> you <Blizzard>. have. <laughs> George, Greg, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Terry, that's okay. I, I know you call me some things that aren't even related to my name. So yeah, I called you. Uh, well, good stuff though. Yeah, I, it's, know, yeah I mean, yeah. all good things, all good things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So stay tuned. We have a lot in the ro- works here at Good Morning Aurora and across the city. So mm-hmm. we will be looking out and living it up. We have a lot of community events we're doing. So stay tuned. Look out for Brett. He'll be mm. popping up around in the community. Absolutely. And we have a lot mm. of really, really cool stuff. And stay tuned for what you're doing as well, yes. too. You yes. know, Aurora Youth Council, a live yeah. teen center. Absolutely. Uh, the Mardi Gras event's coming up. So we do. There's it's a lot of positive it's things May. happening. Mm. Yeah. A lot of positive things happening and great things with youth. All right, ladies and gentlemen, have a fantastic day. We appreciate you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the show on YouTube and uh, take care of yourself and each other.